These two containers here are 40 foot used high cubes with strategically placed cutouts to provide an open concept feel inside and also retain some of the structural integrity. We did this mod fresh out of university. We were young and naive, didn't really know what we were doing. And so I wanna show you everything I did wrong and what I'd change today. Let's go take a tour of this thing. Hope you'll learn something. Welcome inside. A lot of people when they first walk in here are amazed that they're actually standing inside of two shipping containers. And so when you finish these things out, uh, yeah, they look nice and, and it's comfortable in here. And so the original purpose for this was actually to be a cabin for our family to take up to the lake. And we got busy, we needed office space. And so we actually commissioned it shortly after and have been using it ever since. I worked in this for two years and it was comfortable living in Canada. It, you know, it goes from minus 40 to, to plus 30. And so we were able to regulate the temperature in here. We did have to add the air conditioner. That was after the fact. It maintains the, the temperature well. This is meant to be the living room. And so inside of here, we would have a couch or something and then hang a TV on the wall. We have our air conditioner there up high. That's a mini split unit. And then we'd move on. This would be a bedroom here. And this little build out that you see is actually a closet that's accessed inside the bedroom. And so this is what it feels like in a single shipping container home. It's very narrow. Uh, once you're finished framing and lining the interiors of these things, you only got about seven feet of interior width. So it's quite small inside here. You'd only fit like a double bed. You know, a queen would be very, very large in here. So there's not a lot of sleeping quarters in this, this double wide. Uh, we also put our electrical panel inside the bedroom here. And one thing to note is we have high security windows on this thing, but this window here, we cut the security bars off the window, which allow for egress. So in case, you know, there was a fire or something inside of here, the, the people sleeping inside can still get out somewhere other than the doors. Another thing to note is while we're working in here, it got stuffy. And so the first step to try to, to help, you know, the air quality or just regulating the air inside of this thing was we installed a ceiling fan and that seemed to help, but didn't fully cut it. And so another thing we did is installed a circulating fan and this is just a through wall fan, Panasonic fan. So that actually just created a circulation inside of here. And so the air comes into this bedroom through the front end of this double wide and then circulates back around into the kitchen through the hallway. And, and that really helped regulate the temperature and make it feel a little less stuffy inside of here because this thing is not built with an HVAC system. There's no ducting, there's no air movement. It's all electric heat. This is the hallway. It's, it was gonna be a little bit of wasted space uh, and we needed to do that in order to keep a chunk of, of wall in the center here to help hold the roof up. So we utilize as best we can by installing some cupboards uh, to give us just, you know, storage for our goods. And now it's a nice office storage. And then we did a, a little office desk area here so we could, you know, bring a laptop or something and work. And this definitely got utilized for a while here. Our main man marketer was working here, but now he's in the other office with me. Uh, and then there's the closet. And so inside of here, there's the electric water heater and then room for a stackable washer and dryer. It's plumbed for that. And the dryer vents stubbed through the wall. And then all the plumbing and the stack is in this wall, which is shared with the bathroom behind me. But first I'll show you the kitchen. So don't judge the appliances. I think they just showed up in a can one day and we, they work, so we use them. But uh, so yeah, here's the kitchen. There's the up high above the fridge we have. That's that vent that in the bedroom just allows the air to circulate and seems to work pretty well. And so yeah, we have the sink here and the dishwasher, which is all plumbed for the bedroom and the kitchen share a plumbing wall. So that's a two by six wall with another plumbing stack up there. And then all the plumbing just gravity flows down into the, the base of this thing. And it's kind of a bit of a negative where now this whole cabin would need to be skirted and all the plumbing needs to collect and then go to a septic tank. Uh, it's nice sometimes in office settings, more commercial and industrial stuff where we can actually use like a sani flow, a macerator toilet and pump that to a vertical tank. But back to the, uh, the cabin tour here. So this would be the, the, the eating area of the kitchen. And then you'll notice the, the garden doors on the back. And so with these doors here, we actually built this whole thing on a 66 foot oil field skid. And we're planning on building the deck and everything ahead of time and then moving it to the lake, all pre-assembled and built, but that didn't happen. So the windows in here make it feel nice and open. You know, it is only seven feet wide, but it feels bigger than that. So if you're building a container home, and uh, you enjoy light, make sure you put lots of windows to make the space ni feel nice and open. And so here's the bathroom. It's nice and big. Uh, it's I think seven feet wide and about nine feet long, which allowed us to have the full tub and shower inside here and a double vanity with the granite countertops 
and finally our toilet. Uh, one thing to note inside of here is we did get a ceiling fan in here, but that causes all sorts of problems trying to ventilate that outwards and dealing with the added capacity that the ceiling fan requires inside your ceiling. So what I would maybe do differently is install a custom ceiling fan that would actually direct ventilate right out of the side wall of a container. That'd be really cool. So things that we did wrong and what I'd do differently today uh, definitely would be the windows. We ordered these actually out of California. They're a single pane window and that's not even the bad part. The bad part's the framing kit or the frame here. It's a two by three rec tube. It's a hollow tubing and it's just welded in and it's not insulated at all. So we just framed up to it. And so wherever that, that steel is, it's condensating and sweating throughout the winter. And all of the, the return trim here in this window is, is wicking that moisture and causing it all to, to swell. And so, yeah, it's, it's a ripe environment here for mold and mildew growth. And, and definitely the incorrect way of doing this. Another thing is we framed here with two by four spruce lumber. And so again, that's gonna wick the moisture and it's another porous material that can cause mold and mildew growth. So I'd be going to a steel stud interior and this being a, a three and a half inch two by four stud, I'd go down to a, a two and a half inch stud or another thing we're working on is inch and five eight steel studs and pulling them an inch away from the wall, which is really good because then you get a nice even layer of spray foam behind that. You don't have any thermal bridging. Uh, moving on to actually build this thing, we had to cut out the openings first, put the cans together, and then we started doing all the construction. So that's not a very modular way of doing it. To move around a double wide container is quite difficult versus moving around a single 40 or two single 40s and then putting them together on site. But it was the easier way to do it for us, especially when we were not exactly knowing what we were gonna do and just figuring things out as we went. And so to start here, yeah, we had the openings cut out and the containers joined together. First step was we did a two inch rigid foam base on the floor and then 5 8 tongue and groove plywood on top of that and so that we screwed directly down into the existing container flooring. I guess in this area you can do your, your linoleum first and then build your walls on top of that with 2 by 4s which we would have done differently and then the spray foam and finally the interior finishing. So that was wrong. Uh, how we spanned across the joints was very wrong so we on top of the 2 by 4 walls we laminated two by tens together and ran them across the walls, the whole 40 foot length. And then from the outside of the container, we drilled holes and leg bolted through the corrugations into that big two by 10 header. We weren't able to get any foam in behind those two by tens other than the inside corrugations. And so that's, that's a huge area that will cause thermal bridging. I'm actually very surprised to see that we don't have any water stains or anything in the ceiling. So that seemed to work well, but uh, I definitely uh, advise against that on any other future builds. Another thing that I think was kind of intelligent what we did is we used square edge drywall. We didn't mud and tape everything and, and thank goodness because everything would have cracked by then. And so here's an example of it. The square edge drywall doesn't have the, uh, the concave or contoured edge here to allow the weight of mud and tape prior to sanding. So it's just the two ends butt together and that allows for a narrower batten to be installed in between these and that trims it up and then as these things shift and move you know you might get a little cracking in behind the batten but you don't notice that like you would a major drywall crack at a seam or even worse right through the board aside from that i don't know a lot of the interior finishing on this stuff like once you get all the rough openings and the windows and doors installed it's just regular typical construction techniques and yeah just do it do what you like the styles that you like the flooring the, the wall coverings the the colors and so that's all basic but one thing that really needs to be done ahead of time is the pre-planning the, the structural integrity the engineering and the design of these things and so to do it again next time you guys may have seen our our double wide kit that we have for putting two containers together that's it's definitely one option where you can install a header across the containers fully clear span the distance in between making this a way larger wide open concept and then connect the two containers potentially on site rather than us here we had to connect the containers first and then do all the interior finishing which makes it very difficult to move this thing around